So today, we will review the content of Imagine. By the way, my name is Jonal Fies Manilia, your teacher for today's video. Let's start with this question. Which among the following sequences is an arithmetic sequence? Now, here we have three choices and we are looking for an um, arithmetic sequence. In order to find if uh, following sequence are arithmetic, if they have a common difference. So let's first find the difference of letter A. 40 minus 20, that is 20. 20 minus 10 is 10. So from here, there is no common difference. 20 and 10 are differences and they are not common. Therefore, one is not an arithmetic sequence. How about number two? Let's look for the common difference. 16 minus 12 is 4. 12 minus 8 is 4 also. And 8 minus 4 is 4. So the common difference is 4. Thus, number 2 is an arithmetic sequence. In number 3, 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 0 is 3 also. And 0 minus negative 3 is 0 plus 3, or that is 3. The, the, the common difference here is 3. Therefore, it is an arithmetic sequence. So among the choices that we have here, only 2 and 3 is an arithmetic sequence. Number 2, what is the 1,000th term of the sequence 48, 59, and 70? So here, this is an example of an arithmetic sequence, and we're going to find the 1,000th term of the sequence. How? First, we need to look for the common difference. So 70 minus 59 is 11. 59 minus 48 is 11, and this is the common difference. And this is the formula of your um, n term of your arithmetic sequence. Substitution. Our n is 1,000. A sub 1, the first term is 48. n again is 1,000, and the, the common difference is 11. Simplify. 1,000 minus 1 is 999, multiplied by 11 is 10,989, plus 48, that is 11,037. Hence, the 1,000 term of the sequence is 11,037. Third, what is the 49th term of the sequence 150, 147, and 144? So same process as what we do in example number 2. So we need to find the difference which is coming. So 144 minus 147 is negative, is negative 3. 147 minus 150 is also negative 3, and this is the common difference. Using the formula, substitution, first term is 150, n is 49, and our common difference is negative 3. Um, multiply. 48 times 3 is negative 144, and 150 minus 144, the 49 term must be, must be 6 only, okay? So here, the 49 term of the sequence is 6. Another example. What is the second term of an arithmetic sequence if the first term is 7 and the fifth term is 19? Given the first term and the last term, which is the fifth term, is 19, and we're looking for the second term. How? First is to write the given. Then we will use the formula for the n term. Substitution. So n is 19. That is the last term. A sub 1 is 7, the first term. N is a 5 because 19 is the fifth term minus 1 times the difference. So here, we're looking for the difference first, okay? In order for in order for us to find the second term by simply adding the first term by the common difference. Simplify. 5 minus 1 is 4. Transpose 7 to the left side. Nine minus, 19 minus 7 is 12. In order to get the value of d, we will divide both sides by 4. That is, d is equal to 3. And thus, the difference is 3. So to get the second term, just add the first term and the common difference. So first term Latin is 7 plus the difference, which is 3, will give us the second term of 10. And the second term is 10. What is the sum 
are the first 100 terms of the sequence 5, 7, 9, 11. So again, we will check whether this sequence is an arithmetic or geometric or other types of sequence by finding the common difference or common ratio. So let's look for the common difference first. 11 minus 9 is 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 7 minus 5 is 2. And this is the common difference. Therefore, it is an arithmetic sequence. Since we're looking for the sum of the first 100 terms, the formula for this is this. So this is the series of four uh, finite arithmetic sequence. So substitute. Our n is 100. Our first term is 5. And our common difference is 2. Then simplify. 100 divided by 3 is 50. 100 minus 1 is 99. Multiply by 2. That is 198. Plus 10. That is 208 times 50. That is 10,400. Therefore, the sum of the first 100 terms of the sequence is 10,400. The first and the last term of an arithmetic sequence are 5 and 55 respectively. How many terms are there in the sequence if the sum of all terms is 1,200? So here, given is the sum of all terms, which is 1,200, given the first term, which is 5, and given the last term, which is 55. We're looking for the number of terms in the sequence in order to get the sum of 1,200. So using the formula, substitution, series, a sum of the series, a series rather, of the arithmetic is 1,200. Then n divided by 2, n is the number of terms. First term is 5, and the last term is 55. Add, then um, cross multiply, or multiply both sides by 2 in order to eliminate the fraction on the right part. Then divide by 60, therefore n is a 40. There are 40 terms in the sequence if the sum of all terms is 1,200. The first term of an arithmetic sequence is 1 half, and the common difference is 1 half. What is the first four terms of the sequence? Again, this is an arithmetic problem also. So we're looking for the first four terms of the sequence, given the first term and the common difference only. So the general formula for the n term, substitution, n is, is 2, which is equal to 1 half plus 2 t minus 1 times the common difference, which is 1 half. So here we're looking for the second term. So n here is 2. Simplify to get 1. That is your second term. To, to find the third term, we will use the same formula, wherein n here is 3. So substitution, first term, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, simplify, that is 3 halves. That means our third term is 3 halves, and last term is 2, using the same uh, formula. So now, our first four terms here are 1 half, 1, 3 halves, and 2. And these are the first four terms of the sequence. So what is the common difference in the sequence square root of 2, negative 3 square root of 2, negative 7 square root of 2, and negative 11 square root of 2? To find the common difference of your arithmetic sequence, we will use the uh, we need to, I uh, know, we need to, to subtract the, the last term by the previous term. So that is negative 11 square root of 2 minus 7 square root of 2 is square root of 4 over 2. Then negative 7 square root of 2 minus negative 3 square root of 2 is negative 4 square root of 2 also. And negative 3 square root of 2 minus square root of 2 is also negative 4 square root of 2 and that means the common difference is square root, is negative 4 square root of 2 and this is the answer which sequence has a common difference of 2 so now we will we will check each um, uh, given choices if which of the following sequences has a common difference of 2 so 
in order to get the common difference, simply subtract the last term by the previous term. That is 16. Minus 8 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. Then 4 minus 2 is 2. From here, there is no common difference. So 1 is, is, is not. How about number 2? 11 minus 9 is 2. 9 minus 7 is also 2. Then 7 minus 5 is also 2. So this is correct. How about number 3? Negative 6 minus negative 8 is also the same as negative 6 plus 8. That is 2. Negative 8 minus negative 10 is also 2. Negative 10 minus negative 12 is also 2. And this is also correct. So therefore, the sequences that have a common difference of 2 is letter number 2 and number 3 only. The first three terms of an arithmetic sequence are one third x to one half. What is the middle term? So here, we are looking for the middle term, which is the value of your x here, given the first three terms of one third x and one half. So what is the value of your x or your middle term? To find this, we will look for the difference that is given by a sub n minus the first term all over the number of terms minus 1. In our given 1 third x and 1 half, our, our a sub n or the last term is 1 half, our a sub 1 is 1 third, and our n here is 3 because we have 3 terms. So simplify 1 half minus 1 third is 1 sixth, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Using your calculator, that is keep um, change flip. So 1 6 times 1 half, that is 1 12, and this is our difference. So to look for the value of x, which is the second term, all we have to do is to add, add the, the first term and the difference. That is 1 third plus 1 over 12 is 5 12. Hence, the second term or the value of x or the middle term is 5 over 12 or 5 12. What are two arithmetic means between negative 1 and 1? So here our first term is negative 1 and the last term is 1. And we will put two arithmetic means. Okay, we are going to put two sequence or terms between negative 1 and 1. That means we are creating 5, uh, we are creating 4, 4 terms in total. So using the same formula, so a sub n is 1 the last term, and the first term is negative 1, and n here is 4 because um, based on the given, uh, we have negative 1 and 1, and then we are putting 2 arithmetic means, so we have a 4 terms in total. That is negative 1, the 2 arithmetic means, and the 1. We have 4. Simplify 1 minus negative 1 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, the difference is 2 thirds. To get the 3 arithmetic means, we will use the same formula. a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus d. First term is negative 1 plus the common difference of 2 thirds. Using your calculator, it will give us a sum of negative 1 third, and this is your first arithmetic mean. Second arithmetic mean, using your first arithmetic mean, add the common difference. That is negative 1 third plus 2 third, or that is 1 third, and this is your second arithmetic mean, and this is our third term in the sequence. Three arithmetic means are inserted in the sequence 150, 147, 144, 141 to form another sequence. What are the arithmetic means? Here, we must put three arithmetic means between the given sequence. So that means we are putting a term between 150 and 147, another term between 147 and 144, Another term for one, between 144 and 141 to create another sequence. What should we do here? We will simply find the average between two terms. So in order to find the first arithmetic mean, simply add 
150 and 147 then divide by 2. That is the average. Sum is 297 divided by 2 or that is simply 48.5. 148.5. So the first arithmetic mean is 148.5. Second arithmetic mean 144 plus 147 divided by 2 that is 145.5 that is our second arithmetic mean the last mean is 144 plus 141 all over 2 that is 142.5 these are the three arithmetic means that we need to insert in a sequence to form another sequence so that is 150 148.5, 147, 145.5, 144, 142.5, and 141. The third and sixth terms of an arithmetic sequence are x and y respectively. Express the common difference in terms of x and y. Third term is x and sixth term is y. Then we need to find the common difference in terms of x and y. So how? First, we will convert the third term into first term. So third term is x. We will make this as our first term by simply subtracting 2 to our third to create the first term. So we will do the same thing in sixth term. So a sub 6, which is your y, becomes your a sub 4. Then using the formula, substitution, last term, is equal to the first term plus n now is 4 minus 1 times the common difference which is the unknown variable simplify y is equal to x plus 3d transpose x to the other side equation becomes y minus x is equal to 3d in order to find the common difference we will divide both sides by 3 that means D or the common difference is equal to y minus x all over 3. And this is the common difference in terms of x and y. What is the seventh term of an arithmetic sequence if the first terms is a p and the common difference is p plus 2? Same formula applies. n is 7. First term is p, and the common difference is p plus 2. Substitution, then we will use the full method. I simplify first, 7 minus 1 is 6, then distribute. So 6 times p plus 6 times 2. Then simplify, combine like terms, p plus 6p is 7p, then copy the constant, which is 12. So that means the seventh term of an arithmetic sequence is 7p plus 12. Which among the following illustrates a geometric sequence whose common ratio is negative? So here we're dealing with geometric sequence. In arithmetic sequence, we need to find the common difference. In geometric sequence, we need to find the common ratio. How? by simply dividing the last term by the previous term. So in number one, negative 54 divided by negative 18 will give us a positive ratio, and number one is not the answer because the question is looking for the common ratio which is negative. Number two, negative 40 divided by 20 is negative two, so ratio is negative, but we need to find if the ratio is common. We will continue. 20 divided by negative 10 is also negative 2. And negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Ratio is common. The number 2 is correct. How about number 3? Negative 0.4 divided by negative 2 is positive 0.2. And number 3 is not the answer. So only number 2 is a geometric sequence whose common ratio is negative. What is the common ratio in the sequence negative 2, 6, negative 18, and 54? Again, in order to find the common ratio, all we have to do is to divide the last term by the previous term. 
that is 54 divided by negative 18, negative 3. Continue to find if it is common or not. Negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. And 6 divided by negative 2 is also negative 3. Hence, the common ratio is negative 3. What is the ninth term of the sequence? 3072, 1536, and 768. So, we need to find the common difference or the common ratio if this is a sequence. So, let's try. Upon looking, there are the terms. So, we will look for the ratio. 768 divided by 1536 is 1 half. And 1536 divided by 3072 is also 1 half. This is an example of geometric sequence whose common ratio is 1 half. Using the formula, n is 9, first term is 3072, ratio is 1 half, and n is 9. Simplify, 1 half raised to 8 is 1 over 256, multiply by 3072, the ninth term is 12. The first and fourth terms of each metric sequence are 4 and 108 respectively. What is the third term of the sequence? Using the same formula, last term is 108, the first term is 4, R is, is unknown, and N is 4, since the last term is um, 4 terms. So here before we uh, look for the third term, we need to get the ratio. Simplify. So R cubed is equal to 108 divided by 4, or that is equal to 27, R is 3. Again, to look for the third term, all we have to do is to multiply the previous by the ratio to get the last term. Or, um, in order to find the previous term, divide the last term by the ratio. Either is correct. So, third term is equal to last term divided by the ratio 108 divided by 3 is 36 and this is the third term of your geometric sequence. What is the sum of the first 10 terms of the sequence? 1024, 512, 256, 128. This is an example of your geometric sequence. Find the common ratio. So common ratio here is 128 divided by 256, or that is 1 half. So R is 1 half, your first term is 1024, and your nth term is 10. Substitution. Simplify. 1 half raised to 10 is 1, 000, 1 over 1024. Distribute 1024 to both uh, terms inside the parentheses. So 1024 times 1 is 1024, and 1024 times 1 over 1024 is 1. Copy the denominator. Then 1024 minus 1 is 1023. The steps here is to keep, uh, change, and flip. So 1023 times 2 over 1, that is 2046. And this is the sum of the first 10 terms, 2046. What is the sum of the terms of the infinite geometric sequence 64, 16, and 4? This is the formula for the infinite. A sub 1 is 64, and the ratio is 4 by simply dividing the last term by the previous term. And that is 4 divided by 16, or 1 fourth. Simplify. Then keep, change, flip. Therefore, the sum is 256 divided by 3. What is the sum of the fir terms of the infinite geometric sequence? 512, 256, negative, 128, and negative 64. Look for the common ratio first. Negative 64 divided by 128 is negative 1 half. Same goes with the other terms. Uh, this is your common ratio. This is the formula since we're looking for the infinite, we're dealing for the infinite geometric sequence. First term is 512 and ratio is 1 half negative. Simplify, double negative becomes positive, 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. Then 
same process keep change a flip 512 times 2 thirds is 1024 divided by 3 and this is the sum of the infinite geometric sequence in a geometric sequence the first term is 20 and the common ratio is 0 0.25 what are the first four terms of the sequence using the formula of of geometric so we have and here is two look for the second term third term and fourth term using the formula of the geometric sequence so look for the second term first n is two first term is 20 ratio is 0 0.25 simplify to get five this is now your second term third term same process multiply simplify to get 1.25 this is now your third term and the last term same formula to get 5 over 16 therefore the first four terms of the sequence is 20 5 5 fourths and 5 sixteenths what are the two geometric means between 4 and 256 first term is 4 and the last term is 256 we are um inputting or putting two geometric means between 4 and 200, uh, 256 so that means we will get four terms in total same formula again we have now four terms so n is 4 last term is 256 a sub 1 that is 4 your n is 4 again we have four terms in total simplify to get the ratio, get the cube root of uh, 64, that is 4, and this is now the ratio. In order to get the two geometric means, simply divide the last term, which is 256, by your ratio. Or multiply your first term by the ratio to get the second term. So a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 times the ratio. Then a sub 3 or the third term is equal to the second term times the ratio squared substitution first term is 4 ratio is 4 and we have 16 that is your second term or your first geometric mean third term is equal to 256 this is now your second geometric means so therefore the sequence is 4 16 256 A theater has 350 chairs in the front row, 346 in the second row, 342 in the third row, and so on. How many chairs are on the 50th row? And this is an example of an arithmetic sequence. So in order to get the sum, we will use the formula where n is equal to 50. The first um, term is 350 and the last term is unknown. <laughs> Substitution we will get the first at the a sub n by using this formula a sub n or that is a sub 50 is equal to 350 plus n again which is 50 times the common difference of negative 4. how did we get negative 4 by subtracting the last term by the, to the previous term that is 346 minus 350 is negative 4. simplify that means the 50th term is 154. We can now encode 154 to a sub n. Replaced to get 12,600 and this is the sum of the 50th row. There are 12,600 tiers on the 50th row. So same questions but we're looking for the number of tiers if there are 50 rows in a theater. So formula, n is 50, first term is 350, the difference is negative 4, to get your a sub 50 which is 154. There are 154 chairs in the theater if there are 50 rows of chairs in the theater. What is the sum of the first 200 even numbers starting from 2? So here first term is 2. And the last term is 200, but our n is what? Is 199. 
because we're starting from 2 and at 1, that means n is 199. From 2 to 200, there are 199 terms in total. Simplify, 200 plus 2 is 202, multiplied by the half of 199, that is 20,099. That's for today's uh, video. To succeed in learning math, practice, practice, and more practice. In practicing math, do not just read the solutions, actually solve the solved problems again and again until you can solve them without encountering any kind of problem. See you on the next quarter.